Hey Super Brave friends! So, I was just looking at the list of things that are not my virtues, and on the top of the list of things that aren't my virtues, patience. Yep, you're never gonna hear people say, wow, that Super Brave teacher sure is patient. Nope. Now, before I answer the questions that are burning inside of your head like, Joel, how can you be a kindergarten teacher and not have patience? Joel, why is your hair just crazy today? For example, for example, <laughs> I want to tell you who I am. My name is Joel Karlovsky. I am the Super Brave Teacher. And this channel, the Super Brave Teacher, is a channel that gives vision, visibility, and voice to LGBTQ plus teachers and students. It is here to say, you know what, Google? You know what, YouTube? Take us seriously. When you enter the words gay teacher, lesbian teacher, transgender teacher, bisexual teacher, on Google, in Google, we want to see beautifully, radically, positive, accepting things for all of us. So when my, my students say, hmm, what's a gay teacher? They don't see, ah, they see, wee, right? Right, so like this channel, subscribe to this channel, share this channel, find other people who have channels like this, and like their channel, subscribe to their channel, and let's get the voice out that we matter. Now let's get back to my virtues. My virtue, one of my big virtues is being impatient. That sounds counterintuitive, right? Like patience is a virtue. Well, guess what? For me, impatience is a virtue. There's a time and a place for being patient. Often people tell me like, How Bless your heart, you're a kindergarten teacher, wow, you must need so much patience. And I say, you know who needs patience? My students, because I'm a handful. And I do that kind of to break the ice with families, and they love it because they're like, okay, you get it. You get that this is hard, and you get, you're, you're on the ride with us, for us, to support our kids. So I love that part of being a Spanish immersion kindergarten teacher. And for me personally, I have been patient. I have been patient my entire life. And there's a difference between being patient and compliant. So what looked like patience for me was really compliance. Me just saying, mm, I'm not gonna say anything. Mm, I'm not gonna express my needs or wants. Mm, I'm just gonna follow exactly what is being prescribed for me. And inside of me, was just this little kid, this little still small voice inside of me saying, you gotta say something, you gotta do something. This isn't right. And I was like, nope, I've gotta be patient, I've gotta be patient, and it, it, it's gonna shift, it's gonna get better. And like we've talked before on this channel, it didn't for me, it got progressively worse and harder for me. I was stuck in this grieving of never, of knowing and thinking that I would never be an out and proud gay man, which I am now. So when I say that for me, impatience is a virtue, I am saying for me, for me, that when I see something that makes my heart and my gut say, ugh, that's not right, I can't be patient. I need to be impatient and I need to see it and say it and name it. And if it's not okay, I need to say that's not okay. If I am feeling something because of something going on and it's this natural reaction inside of me, I can't just be patient you know, you know what? I'm just gonna not say anything. I'm just gonna be patient. No, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna name it and I'm gonna say, it is not okay. Please stop. Please stop. When I was a kid and even through college, I would use the pinching trick. Now this isn't a real trick, it's just something I use kind of to survive. But anytime I got that feeling of like, oh, I should say something or do something, I would just take my finger and I would pinch my hand. And that would just be kind of like, don't say anything, just keep your mouth shut, it's gonna be okay. And I would just pinch myself until it just hurt and hurt and hurt to remind me like, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't do anything. And I remember sometimes I would have bruises on my hand because I would pinch myself so hard because there was always something in me that had to get out. So now as an adult, as an out and proud gay teacher, as an out and proud gay man, as an out and proud gay advocate, I can't just 
pinch myself anymore. I can't just say, okay, let's just deny that these things are going on and that you feel this way and that something's not right. I need to be impatient and I need to say, no, this needs to stop today. Something I say again and again on this channel is, let's make it better today. So I'm gonna ask myself, what are the little steps I can do today? What are the micro shifts I can do in my life today to make it better? How can I be impatient with what I see going on? Now that doesn't mean going to an extreme for me anyway. That doesn't mean that I have to do 100 things to prove that I'm doing something to show my impatience, but it does mean that I need to do something because I can no longer be silent. And I ask you, what are you being patient with that might be compliance? What is something that you are being patient about that you know you need to say something about, that you need to do something about? It's hard. It's really hard for me to have a platform like this, have a blog, have a new website, all this stuff, which is great, but it puts my voice out there and it makes me realize you realize that being compliant, for me anyway, is easy because I'm so used to it. I'm used to compliance. Tell me what to do, I will comply. But being impatient or standing up for what I believe in and what I know to be true is hard. And what I know to be true is loving kindness. What I know to be true is radical acceptance. What I know to be true is intense gratitude and just being curious about the other person and being curious about myself and asking questions. So it might not look like me saying, no, you need to stop this. It might be saying, hey, tell me more about this. I really don't get this. Tell me more about why these things happened in, in our past. I really don't get this. My guess is you don't get my story. My guess is you don't, I don't know your story. Let's listen to each other. Let's share our humanity with each other because my guess is that we're a lot more similar then we are different. So I'm gonna sit in that, and instead of being patient or compliant, I'm gonna be impatient and say, tell me your story, I wanna know. Let me tell you my story. Let's figure this out together. So friends, be impatient with me, okay? Don't deny what's going on in your life or what, what you know you need to do or say. Do it today, say it today. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up on being impatient with yourself. Be curious with yourself. That's why we have this channel. So thanks for letting me ramble. I had to like do three different little takes of this because it's hard for me to talk about these things that I have done in the past to cope. And it's hard to talk about my compliance because I'm never talking about a specific person or a specific group of people I'm talking about humanity and how hard it is to just be who we are. So thank you for being on this journey with me. Like this channel, share this channel, share this story. What are you being compliant of? What are you gonna shift? What do you wanna be curious about? What do you wanna be impatient about? What is your virtue? Tell me, leave a comment below. I wanna know, I love when you leave comments. And I, like I always end this, you are enough. Whether you are impatient or super patient and compliant, you are still enough. You are worthy, you are loved, you are seen, you are valued just because you are you. And I'm gonna say to myself like I've been trying to do, Joel, you are enough, you are worthy, you are loved. Even when you have been compliant and patient in the past, even when you are compliant and patient now, you are loved. Bye friends.